We're about to start play in the opening quarter of this round one match between the Demons and the Bulls. Up they go, it was Mulholland who got the tap. Wish Sharp went in hard, ducked, weaved. He was able to get the first kick, it wasn't effective. Kirkwood on the ball, interesting move. Gives the handball off, Mullet's already got his hands on it. Gives it out there, wide, that goes to Barden. So Barden, another one of their recruits, dodged and weaved, was able to give it off, wasn't effective. Comes back down to Sutton. Good play there by uh, Wish Sharp, it was, I think, who went low. Finally comes out. Defensive 50 now. They're just handballing the ball around. Sutton coming up for his number. Get another handball. They went over to Bill House. He was Colin holding the ball. Said the umpire could tackle by Rob. They go inside 50 now. The ball is not a great kick. And Ryan Taylor was able to take the mark. Disappointing for, uh, for uh, Rob. But, uh, sorry, Hastings, they put a lot of pressure on the ball. Ron Harris, as we can say. Ball comes out towards the defensive 50. Going in there as we keep it in hand. Dave out to the McHugh. McVeigh goes in short. Lovely. Stephen Rob takes the mark. About 48 metres out from goal directly in front. Thought about playing on, he's still thinking about it. Goes now. The little chip kick puts his uh, teammate under a little bit of pressure there. Going back with a fly to the ball is Luke Clark. And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Left forward pocket. Hastings kicking to uh, the Frankston. Well, what is it? It's the, uh, the Hastings Road end. So the umpire ready to throw the ball back in. Left front pocket for the Blues. Ball comes in there. Sutton could play there by Mulholland. Took front position. Trying to get the handball out. Ball was chance. Nothing. Comes to Mulholland now. Gives a handball off. Ducking. Weaving. Good play there. Goes for a little handball out wide. That looks like uh, Jansen again, I think it was. Going high in there was uh, Matthew Clifford. He couldn't get it, but kicking the goal was Steve Chalalandis. And the ex-Colindle star in his second season here at the Hastings Blues. Kicks the opening goal of the game. Full credit to Hastings there. They uh, obviously right had a bit of the footy early, flicking it around and going back with kind of pressure, which is fantastic to see. Quite a bit of space, but, but Hastings just continued to press and pressurise and, uh, and turn the footy over eventually and resulted in a good goal to open the go tally. So one straight, six points. Hastings leading uh, yet to score. Just cleaning up their hands at the moment, Brent. Yeah, I think so, mate. Right. Absolutely. Yep. So uh, it'll be good to see uh, from your perspective, Scotty Jansen in there doing plenty of touches early. Good play there by Sutton, but again it comes down to Wishek. Go back to Jansen. Kicks it inside, 50. McVeigh came out, couldn't take it. Going in there was uh, Hewitt, I think it was. A clear and kick out of defence there from the de Demons out to the member side of the ground. Going hard, it was Henley. He got plenty of it last week, but the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of the Hastings club. It's the Blues, one straight goal. Why yet to score? A lot of space up in the forward 50 for Rye, as you'd expect right now. So they get a quick exit from this stoppage. And in they go, they're going to look dangerous. So the ball comes out now. Good takeaway there from the clearance. Goes towards Rye, coming out with a fly on the ball. Terrific work there was David Hull. And uh, Hull was missing a little bit in action last year as well. So he's another welcome addition back into their side. Goes in short, Mulholland. How did he Good find kick. that space? Great kick. He's got it at centre-half back. So standing the mark there is Henley, they want the switch, this call's being made from the bench. Now Harlan's not sure where to go. Don't think he'd be happy with that, Tully. It's uh, if you kick the punch kick in there on the, on the inside of the 45 and the big fella just needed someone to dish to open it. And coming out there it was uh, Gerald Lambert took the mark, went out towards Clark, he couldn't go, the ball wasn't clean going to him though. He's back in there though, he got help without the footy, the player said play on. Comes out there towards Stratton, he's on the right side for a left footer! Hit the it's uh, touched on the line through for a minor score. So, a uh, very exciting start there for the Bulls. Tony Stratton with the chance for that positive start. Very positive for Hastings. And, uh, yeah, a little bit of a 50-50 ball that one, wasn't it? Well, I've played about six minutes. They're under pressure again out here. The ball goes in long. It was from Taylor. Goes towards the defensive 50. Lloyd's got to go. Standing down short. There was Stratton. Goes in short. Couldn't take the mark. There was... Uh, I think that might have been Shawnee Foster in his first game for the Blues. They're under pressure down there, the Demon defence, but that was well worked out. Handball comes out to Henley. He's got a little bit of space now. Doesn't know what to do with it. Richard made the tackle. Could have been big for holding the ball. They're confused out there, the Demons. They're looking for support for one another. Can't find it. Going in hard there was Shadow Lambus. Richard got caught. Little quick kick comes out from Millhouse. Goes towards the half. Uh, defensive half forward line. And the ball eventually goes over the line and out of bounds. They're under pressure right footy club at the moment. You'd love to see just a little bit of tempo. I know it's early in the game, but uh, Hastings is certainly pushing and uh, they look very dangerous at the moment. So the ball comes back into play once again. Good play there by Mulholland. He got front position. Down front. Forward there was 
Mullet snapped it around the body, goes in uh, towards the wing position. That was Sabiris. Hey, Sabiris up against David Hull. Being the player could get possession of footy and it goes over the line out of break bounds. Right in front of our commentary position. Here at Dark Ray over in Hastings. It's the big clash. Thanks to Pete and Team Chelsea Stores, Mornington and Rose, but it's Hastings 1-1. Why one, one, yet to score? Mal Horan again dominated back by Jules. Comes out there towards Hewitt. Juicy looks at me and Buck Stratton's had plenty of it as well. Goes backwards again to Hewitt. Hewitt got one late. Should have been down the ground. The umpire said no. Stephen Robert the fall the ball and half forward. Couldn't get it. Gathers it now. Kicks it up there towards Clark. Clark versus Taylor. Taylor took front position and took the mark. Good play by the rifle back. So he wants to plant a little bit close to the outside of the ground. It was a nice kick. And his teammate there in the ground, Miller Cotton. Another new face to the Demons. Goes up towards the wing position. He at least found some space. Gets up on the wing position. In the side. Another was known as Toe Pump with Evan Goji. He gets in the handball out. The winter no in particular. He would have a look on the numbers over the Demons. The umpire's found a free kick. I think it's going to go to Hastings. He's down and he's staying down. And Sutton was caught up in that. Scotty Jansen, let's hope that that shoulder uh, holds off. And he looks like he's got the free kick. Out of side of the ground on the wing, there's going to be, no, he's, uh, it's not to him, so I'm not sure what this free kick's for, but anyway, Peter Wilson's got it. Out of wing position, the Blues lead, seven to no score. Have not been inside 50 as yet, the Demons. The ball goes up towards full forward, Luke Clark, he overran the footy. Comes out there towards uh, Taylor, I think it was. Comes out there towards Mullet, or Henley, is it? Can't pick that player up. Uh, we'll get him in a minute. That was Henley. So uh, the ball beats him over the line out of bounds. Still inside 50 for the Blues. Out of side of the ground. Certainly dominating early on, I tell you. They certainly are as the ball goes back into play. Mulholland again was able to get the tap. Good roving there by the Demons. But Morrison kick, picks the ball up. Kicks it inside 50. A terrific mark there by Daniel Wishart. And he looks a million bucks at all uh, early. Yeah. In and out, in and out. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, coming out of the goal square there, Toby. So it might be with Hastings getting a, a fraction more depth midfield-wise with uh, a few additions over the summer. It might be a new role for, for Wishart to spend a bit of time forward. Premiership player, Lane Warren, as a key forward. So he knows how to play the position. That wasn't his greatest effort, though. He didn't allow for the Blues at all. Swing across to the left, three for a minor score. So it's the Blues move on to one goal, two, eight. Leading the Demons, yet to score. Inside 50s, Jordy King. Uh, it's all Hastings, 6 to 0 at the moment. 6 to 0 shows their early domination as Henley gets another kick out towards. Uh, uh, it's not Henley, in fact, it's Chris Barden. He was able to get the ball clear out to the outer wing position. The umpire will throw the ball back into play. What's their style like here? Uh, any, any competition for you, George, with the style of the boundary throw? It all looks uh, very impressive to me. As <laughs> Simon Taylor, the ex Hawk, he was at the back. He was able to get the tap. Finally comes out there. There's uh, Barden again. He's had plenty of it. Goes in towards Brady Egan, and Egan takes the mark at half forward. Plays on immediately. Puts his teammate under a bit, bit of pressure. That's Stephen Danaher with that lovely left foot kick. Kicks it up towards full forward. And Gelino came out, tried to take the mark, couldn't. And there's the first inside 50 for the Demons. Bit of space there for Rye. Uh, it's uh, I think Dunny would probably be a little bit disappointed with the return from six entries to zero at the moment. So the umpire ready to throw the ball back in. About 30 around from the Demons goal. Good play there by Taylor. He's able to take front position. Mahone's been dominating as we know. Andrew Dean ran it, ran off without it. Taylor Stratton's in there. There's Winters Kerr battling out. It wasn't Winters Kerr in fact. It was Stephen Danaher. And uh, the umpire will come in and take a bounce. Bounce or boundary throw in, lads? So, no, a bounce. About two metres inside the rope. As they go up again, Taylor was able to get that tap, hitting the pack hard there with the Demons, but uh, went without the footy and the ball rolls over the line out of bounds. It was Brady Egan who took the ball over. And the ball is out of bounds once again. About 30 metres around from the Demons' goal. The ball comes into play. Taylor takes the back position. Good play there by Mulholland again. And Hastings' defence able to work the ball out. was good play. Could have been down the ground. Umpire said no. Sean Foster, the ex Bomb Beach champ, comes out and takes the mark. Kicks it inside. That's a beautiful kick. Found yeah, Manny yeah. Clifford, his Bomb Beach teammate. Goes inside looking for Vandenham. Couldn't take the mark. Clark, all he's got to do is shrug off his opponent. He does. Gets under the left foot. Snaps around the body. It goes across the face. Stevie rubs a chance from here. Spills over the boundary line eventually. Good uh, defensive work there. I think might have been from Matty Dunn. 
And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Transition was slick. Absolutely, I was about to, uh, about to say the same thing. Ryan just got caught out on the hop there. Toey and if that entry had been a fraction better going inside 50, Hastings would have almost run into an open goal. So they got caught out the back there. Ryan, right, I would be disappointed with that. Reggie, van at hand, gets a little handball out. Oh, went with one arm, two. Scott Jansen. Getting a bit of an early toe. He is getting plenty of it. The umpire said so he's been copped high. So it was a 50-50 decision. Did he hold on to it or was he pinged for high? And the umpire went high. So it might be Stratton, actually, who's got yeah, this ball. Like he's already had one ping at goal. He's a magnificent kick of the football, long range in this journey. Won't bother him whatsoever. He's got the wind at his back as well. Definitely the goal scoring end. Certainly started at a frantic pace, Hastings. They'd be very happy with their start. So Stratton lines up for goal. Starts at right, brings it back left. That's a ripper. It was always a chance from there. The Blues supporters love it. And they move on to 2-2-4 and leading Rye right yet to score. You're listening to Adam P, the voice of Peninsula Football. Hi, I'm Jack, and my name's Pete from the Mornington and Rosemont Toaster Stores. This year's winners of the Toaster License and the Year Award. My dad has been really busy lately, but he would tell me they're recognised for their customer service excellence. And you really need to get in store and experience it for yourself. So jump in and see the Toaster License of the Year team at the Toaster Store in Mornington or Rosemont. Of course, I'm not sure you're going to my Toaster. But in the meantime, I'm off to go and kick the floor with Dad. Well done, Dad. Thanks, Sam. A station sponsor. And welcome back. Uh, the Blues have started to a fly. Good work there. Oh that was by David Hull. Little kick out. He's got some space there, Dunny. That's Brendan Dunn, the coach. He kicks the ball out wide, looking for Rob. He's caused some headaches, hasn't he? He's got great speed and knows where the footy is. He's so the here, sorry. Dunn. He was able to get the ball out. Kirkwood's got it now. He needs to get around a couple. He does. Gives it out there towards uh, Nathan Henley. Gives it back to Kirkwood. The pressure here from the Blues is enormous. Goes out towards Barden. Barden caught one high. The umpire saw it too. He'll take the free kick. Half back. Out of side of the ground. Probably the best player so far, Barden. Goes in short. Little went. Was nice. He gave it to Stephen Danaher. Beautiful left foot kick. We're told to watch it. Comes out there towards Wilson. Kicked four last week. Ball goes uh, towards the 50 metre line. Going hard there is Lloyd. Can he get around to his right foot? He does now. Kicks it inside 50. Going back with the fly of the ball. There was Sutton. He couldn't get it. Gelino. Left foot snap. Around the corner. Goes to the top of the square. And there he is. Brendan Dunn. Mops up. Kicks it towards centre half back. Picking it up there. Beautiful it was Richie Van in hand. Little handball give was terrific to Hewitt. They're running through the middle of the ground now. They've got the numbers. Charlie Lambus, can he pick up and gather? He does. Gets away under the right foot. Centre half forward. Looking for Clark. Two versus three. Good play there by Clark. He flew high. Couldn't take the mark. They're claiming it down there, the Demons. And Pyle said no. Dunn gives it back. And they're able to clear. Last line of defence. Looking there towards Barden. But clipping it again is Charlie Lambus. Right, no one stood on the mark. He took off. Had a shot for goal. Then put it through for a minor score. So again, let off the hook there, the Demons. Yeah, working well at the moment, Tony. That, that ball went right down deep into Hastings' forward line, and they just need to switch the ball out to space, but there's just no one from Royal willing to work into the open space. So he had to go straight out the middle, which is a dangerous kick. So we played 15 minutes. Richie Van in hand comes off the ground. He's had a sensational opening 15 minutes. Getting the footy now there is Henley. Hasn't seen a lot of it. One of the key recruits was on fire for the Demons last week. Not sure where to go. Their setup's good defensively, the Blues. Goes up there towards the big fella. Couldn't take it. Brady Egan, you're going to get caught. He needs to give it off. He couldn't. He finally does to Dean. That was brilliant stuff there by Andrew Dean. Goes in short. Looking for Gelino. Comes out, meets it now. Wants to get on the left. He does. It'll snap inside to Dean. Was good. The great defensive work there by the Blues. And they come out of uh, attack again. Goes towards Wishart. Kicks the ball up towards the 50 metre line. Couldn't take the mark. There was Mawson. Henley taps it under his leg. Probably should have attacked it a little bit harder. Mawson, what can he do? Picked up there by the Demons defence, and that's Taylor. Taylor went towards Egan. Egan for Rye. Gives it to Henley. He's under pressure. Wishart gave it out towards Mawson. Goes inside 50 now. Ryan Taylor leads Clark for the race of the ball. The ball didn't sit for him. Clark picks it up now. He's got some space. Goes in short. Couldn't find a teammate. Coming out there was McVeigh. They uh, tried to swap the footy of the two Hastings players there was McVeigh and Charlie Lembus and it allowed the Wild Demons to come in uh, through a tie, uh, dry Lloyd and uh, hold the footy up. 
They'd be, uh, Hastings would just be absolutely thrilled with their pressure at the moment. There's not one right kick, apart from a stop play, that's under, that's, that's not under pressure. So, yeah, it's been terrific. They're causing a lot of turnovers. They are. They're able to get the ball out of the trouble. There's Matty Sebeels, kicks the ball up towards halfback, couldn't get it. There's Wishart again. Goes the don't argue, little handball out. The umpire's picked there a free kick. No play on. Sebeels again. Gives a little handball off to Kirk when he tucks the ball under the arm. Gives it out to Winters Kerr on the wing position. Member side of the ground here. A little handball give. Their tackling pressure is wonderful at the moment. The Blues. Can they maintain it for four quarters? We'll see. Picked up by Ben King. Kicks it up the line. Was it his best effort? And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. So they go inside again. Taken there by Danaher, son of Terry, kicks it inside 50. Going hard after it there was Wilson. And Wilson uh, just dropped the ball in front of him. The umpire gave him the benefit of the doubt. Brady Egan in there. Taken out there was Dean. Lovely delivery there to Gelino. And Gelino comes out and takes the mark directly in front. About 40 metres out. Understatement, obviously, Tully, but they really need this ride. They need to steady up because Hastings are absolutely all over them right now. So they've played almost 17 minutes into the opening quarter. Here in the Telstra Stores Mornington Rosebud match of the day, thanks to Pete and the team. And it's Gelino having the first shot on goal for the afternoon for the Demons. As we said, played 17 minutes and this is their first shot on goal. We'll go to Geordie King in a minute to get some inside 50s, but that's a lovely kick off the boot, and the Demons are on the board finally. They kicked the first goal for the afternoon. Hastings, two goals, a 3-15. Rye, one straight six. And that is on the Rye Hotel scoreboard inside 50s, Geordie. Yeah, Hastings just dominating at the moment. They're leading Rye 9-4. to four. And also leading possession getter for Rye is Chris Barden with six. Beautiful work there by Geordie King, just providing all the stats. We've missed him over the last couple of years. He's got his eyes on the AFL, mate, and piling. He'll, uh, he'll be there in a couple of years. Oh, I'm sure that. he works hard enough. Opportunity will come. It will. As the ball goes up once again, Dan Noble finds himself in the ruck, so he's able to give Josh Mulholland a chop out. He was just sensational. He opening 12 or 13 minutes of the game. And their pressure, Daniel Wishart's having some sort of a game at the minute. He certainly is. I think as, as good as their pressure's been, Tony, they haven't quite got the reward they're after, I don't think. They've had a lot of dominance here, and they'd like to be another, you know, two or three goals in front. This guy's looking their most dangerous forward uh, cross half forward at the moment again is Brady Egan. So Egan's got the ball half forward for the Demons. They're starting to look a little more composed as they kick the ball inside 50 just set it on heads hoping for a mark no one was able to take it Morse a little bit slow to get rid of it allowed Cheryl Lambus to chop it off he's tackled and uh, the umpire will come in and bounce so the Demons into attack again 40 out from goal they trail 15 to 6 so they're down by 9 points on the Rye Hotel scoreboard good tap out once again there and it allowed uh, the teammates, I think that might be hard to run under the free. That's a good kick and it goes to Foster. So Foster's got the ball, goes in on board, terrific kick, gave it to Noble. So Noble in the ruck, he's got the ball. Wouldn't you love Foster on your side? So mobile. Runs, runs, runs. Good kick there by Noble, opens it out to Stratton. He'll like it on this side of the ground. Left foot goes inside 50 now, looking okay. for Foster. You give a man a rap and that's what happens. He could have got one in the head there. The umpire said no, play on. Kirkwood is able to get the ball out. Gave it out there to Barden, and Barden a little chip kick there went to uh, Mullet. So Mullet back to Barden. He wants it back there, Ryan Mullet. Uh, go further up the ground looking for Regan. Was caught behind, so he went. The punch was good work. Mullet forced off the footy. Good play there by Jansen. Gave it to Mulholland. And this is where he's improved his footy. Around the grounds. Kicks it inside 50. Gave Clark every opportunity. Good work there. Benny Winters curls able to mop up. And he gave it out there towards Chris Barden. Out of side of the ground, Mullet's got it now. Just playing tempo footy now, I reckon, right? Yeah, probably, to be honest, Tyler, probably seven or eight minutes too late. So, Barton's got the footy again. How many is that now, Jordan? Uh, he's had ten with four marks. Well, he's having some sort of a game, Chris Barton. He wants to go short, does so. Finds Betty Winters Curl right in front of the Hastings interchange area. It's the way you stop momentum, Tully. It's, uh, You've got to deny the opposition the footy, so if you can chip it around for a couple of minutes, if you can, it's, it's super important with the uh, to get the momentum. So good work there by Matty Clifford, ex Bond Beach, goes out there towards Jansen, goes inside, it went over the head there with Clark, turnover could be costly. Going out there to Millhouse, can he gather, he does now, kicks it inside, 50, Galino again, Gelino I should say, Gelato, Gelino. <laughs> And he takes the mark, about 45, 50 miles out from goal, but uh, looking very productive, Gelino, at the minute. 
He is, he's getting a little bit of space. It's a costly turnover that by, by young Jansen going through the middle there. It was a, it was a probably a one on two situation, needed to hit the target. Unfortunately missed and obviously the backs from Hastings have pushed up the ground to look to attack. So offered a, a little bit of space for the wide forward and going back down the shot. So Jolino comes in now, left foot, kick four last week, that's a mung, a shocking kick, there's a bounce all the way, no, Mulholland's there in the last lane, gave it out to Vandenham, Vandenham goes in short, looking for, finding Alanis, the donk, he gave some oh, candy, kicked it out wide, looking for Jansen, can Jansen run onto it inside the boundary line, he does, shows a clean pair of heels, goes in short, looking for Hewitt, Hewitt went with the one juke, couldn't take the mark, tackled over the line and uh, out of bounds. Now, 45 metres out from the Blues goal. Really happy with Mohan's work rate. So you spoke about this morning on the show that he's uh, he's running better than he ever has and you can certainly see that in the play so far. So he's just setting things up again, Mohan. That's a shocking kick there from the Demons. That was Ryan Taylor. Lee Morse uh, shaking his head, not happy with it at all. But Taylor Stratton's got the pill. He won't want somebody of his calibre on the right side for a left foot grabbing the pill about 50 out. You've got to be careful here, Hastings. You don't want to get too many players forward of this ball right now. You want to allow space to your forwards to lead into and actually attack the contest. So it's important to feel them stay horizontal like that option there was. So good stuff. So it's a nice kick. There's another one in the middle there. You can see it. It was. Right, just it. And uh, that's Matty Clifford. So Clifford goes with a big long kick up towards uh, centre half forward. Oh, he found some space. Luke, Luke Clark, he had no right at all to take that mark. And he was able to do it and do it in fine style. And Luke Clark will line up for goal for the Blues. Yet to kick one. Goal kickers to this point. Still at Cherry Lambus kicked the first of the game. Taylor Stratton quickly to follow. And Luke Clark. Wonderful player at Frankston. No doubt about that, George. Uh, we've got scores from around the grounds. We've got Rosebud leading 3-4-22 against Frankston yet to score. And also Red Hill up by two goals against Crip Point. So good uh, Thanks for that, uh, Jordy. Thanks, and that's a goal to Luke Clark. So that's another one up for the Blues. They move on to three goals, three leading row, one straight kick. That is on the Rye Hotel scoreboard. You're listening to Adam P, the voice of Peninsula Football. If you're sick of pokies and plastic pumps, try the Heritage Tavern at Bell Mowry. A quaint, comfortable 1930s house on two acres of gardens with quite light music every Sunday. It's even family friendly. And of course they do functions from casual to weddings. But that's not the best bit. It's the quality meals at great prices every day. Not to mention a great range of local wine, local beer and local cider. Head down to the Heritage Tavern in Bell Mowry. It's about as local as you can get. Station sponsor. In attack again, the Blues, they need to run out of trouble here, the Ryan Demons, they do, they kick the ball towards half forward, a big push out there from Matty Sabils, the umpire said there was nothing in it, he needs some support, gets it now there in Sutton, Sutton wants Barton out wide, Barton's got Mullet, it wasn't a great handball, Mullet inside, 50 set sail for goal, win grabs it, takes it across the face. And it registers one minor score, so they move on to one goal at one. Hastings, three goals, three. Just going back to that, that uh, centre clearance there, they, they got a forward Hastings to a two on one, and I think it was uh, McVeigh flying for the mark. It's just a little fella coming in, it might have been, I'm not sure the, uh, the um, Hastings player there, but he came in, he just had to play his role and stay on the deck and provide a bit of, uh, bit of assistance on the ground, but Ryan ended up clearing the ball and had a shot on goal. So the kick in comes in now, it was a nice one, Noble finds himself with a little bit of space. He wants to go along, he does so, Pete Morrison's got the city, the shepherding work was done there by Jansen, it was terrific work, allowed Morrison take an uncontested mark. He wants to go inboard, he does, there he is again, Foster. So Foster's got the ball, playing as a high half forward, kicks the ball inside, 50 now, one-on-one -on -one situation, there's a push out there from Clark, and Pye said no, went just curl around the corner, McVeigh went for it, couldn't get it, and uh, he got the first one to butter up though, that was terrific pace there, go, but he gave it off to Barden, Barden to Mullet, who's starting to get a little bit of it now, how many Geordie? Uh, that's his seventh. Seventh position there for Mullet, he's just accumulating, you would have thought he had seven positions, Richie Van has been terrific, Stratton again, he's dominating, he kicks the ball inside 50, it was more of a kick and hope, Rob, great mark there by Stephen Rob was able to push Matty Dunn off the footy, runs inside 50 now, kicks it towards the centre half forward, and there he is, that's a great mark there taken. 
by Daniel Dickinson from Sunnyville. Kicks the ball inside. Clark, he's got his name written all over it. Couldn't get it. Got one high umpire, Seb Malalatis. He's got some support. Little handball to Foster. Another one comes out towards Rob, but Ben Winners Kerr grabs it. Kicks it towards the defensive 50, and the ball dribbles out. Geez, they're under some pressure there. I certainly are. That mark from uh, Steve Rollbone on the flank there. Moved it quickly. Let that quick off the mark. Moved it quickly into the corridor and really put Ryan under the pressure. So it's uh, it's interesting times for Ryan Footy Club at the moment. They certainly are under the pump. So the umpire will bring the ball back into play. Boundary umpire right is defensive 50 out of side of the ground. Ball comes in. Good handball there. Once again it's Alanis. Alanis on the left foot goes in short. Finds Clark. So Clark could be a chance from this position, I reckon. The wind's blowing straight down the ground. Right goalpost should uh, get him some assistance here. He's a beautiful kick of the footy. Is that a promising start, hasn't he, Toe, with his, with his new footy club? He has indeed. So he's already kicked one. Luke Clark. And uh, he's lining up for goal number two. Starts it right. Allows for the breeze to blow it in. It didn't. It stayed straight. And I reckon the umpire is going to uh, call it through for behind. So there you go. Certainly didn't uh, assist him at all the wind on that occasion. Went pretty straight as Mullet grabs the ball now. Long torpedo comes out wide looking for Egan. Egan versus Dunn. Good use of the body there from Dunny. He knew that Brady Egan was going to get him for speed, so he used the body, forced him off the contest. And the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Right in front of our commentary position here, out of side of the ground, true win. It's the Blues. Three goals, a four. Leading row, one goal, one. The band of umpire, ready to bring it back in. No, one majority kicks out in the umpire fraternity, just band of umpire at the moment as the ball comes in, goes out towards Sutton. Danaher tries to get a handball out. They dive on top of it, good pressure again there from the Blues on ballers. That was a free kick, it's going to Taylor Stratton. Chris Barden not overly happy with uh, him. But Stratton's had heap of it, and there's Jordy. Uh, oh, he won't get eight, but he got seven. <laughs> So uh, seven possessions for Taylor Stratton. So at uh, three quarter, uh, quarter time, it's uh, Hastings, three goals, a four. Leading right, one goal, one. We'll go to a break and we'll come back with the first a quarter up. You're listening to Art Upper P, the voice of Peninsula Football. <laughs> and it is a little bit blurry. It's just streaming down the right end of the ground. As the umpire throws the ball back up again, it's Taylor in the ruck this time around. Let's see what the way on balls can do this quarter because they, uh, they've got to raise their quarter time by their coach, but they're inside 50 once again, Hastings will not waste any time comes out towards that little break and Stevie Rob again, can he get the handball out? The tackle was terrific and it's been rewarded too and that's from Lee Morse, one of the best stoppers uh, in the competition Lee Morse. Good, uh, good sign of intent there from the Rough Footy Club, first contest to uh, to lay a good tackle and they did so It was, and I think that's Murray response. Murray who's got the ball now, decides to go across the ground, needed to be a centimetre perfect kick and it was Simon Taylor takes the mark, still at last line of defence for the Demons, goes further up the ground, gives it to Denaher. So Denaher's got it now, defensive 50, goes for a little dark pass, it almost speared Jack Wilcon in half, but, but he's able to take the mark, he gets it now, left foot up towards half forward, coming out there, Chris Wilson couldn't get it, David Hull mops up, across half back, gives it off to Taylor Stratton, does a little bit of a song and dance, oh, just completely fresh aired it, it was comical, as right, the ball goes out take. towards uh, Barden, Barden chips it across, and Brady Egan takes the mark, plays on immediately to Danaher, you'd like him from here, you'd think. He sprayed it across the face, though, so through for a minor score. So a good build up for the Demons, and we get the first score of the second quarter. Bit of a gift there from Stratton, a bit of a blunder, but um, I'm sure he'll respond for that. So right, first score in the second quarter. Kick in goes out towards the Hastings Club side of the ground. Eventually it spills over the line out of bounds. So the umpire, Brandy umpire, plenty of work to do once again. Be interesting to see if Hastings can just maintain that pressure. So he just, it was absolutely electric in that first quarter and they were all over Rice. So it'd be interesting to see how they come out this quarter. So Josh Mulholland got the front position. Tapped it down towards Hewitt. Hewitt got a sweeping handball. Mawson, he had to take the hit and he was happy to do it. Kept his feet. He kept his feet. You're spot on there, Brent Clinic, as the ball goes in towards the 50 metre line now. Colin McVeigh, you like him in these situations. He couldn't go in the footy though. He lost his feet. Keeping it though was good there from the Demons. A sweeping handball went, went towards uh, Nathan Henley. Henley goes inside, uh, well, I thought he was going to go inside 50. He went for the chip, Brady Egan. He put him under enormous pressure at the fall of the ball. Comes to Andrew Dean again. Little right for chip out wide, went towards Sutton. Sutton reached for it, but he was able to take the mark about 40 metres out. So good work there from Red Sutton. As we said, 201st game today. 
played his 200th against Rosebud. In on a good Friday. Great time, hasn't he, Tully? It has been an absolute sensation, no doubt about it. Played a lot of games for Rape, started his career at Dingley, of course. His own man was a terrific umpire, usually a pretty good kick of the footy with Sutton on this occasion, not to be, threw for another minor score. So they move on to one goal of three. Right, leading uh, Trailing Hastings, who are uh, three goals at 422, so the difference is uh, 13 points. They've been a little bit cleaner this quarter, right? Which is a good sign. Kane Stratton brings the ball back into play. Little chip over towards Matty Clifford. So Clifford up against the banjo ranges. This kick needs to be good. It is. It was a nice one. Going back out there towards, uh, that's Paul Rodash. Chipping across the face of goal, going to Ben King. So King's got it now. Defensive 50, out of side of the ground. Goes up the line, a lovely kick. Mulholland has found some space. Takes the mark in front of his counterpart there in Taylor. Kicks the ball up the ground looking for Rob. He called Winners Kerr out of it, I reckon. Because Rob took an uncontested mark. Swings the ball, looking for Cheryl Landis. Oh, Barton had to go and he didn't. And Cheryl Landis took an uncontested mark. It's in a half forward. It goes inside 50 now. Clark came out and took a ripper. And his name went all over it, leading out, and uh, Charles Lambus was a terrific kick, just placed it in his area, and he was able to uh, take a very, very strong mark. They did well there, Hastings. I think it was Steve Rob on that out of flank, Tully. Had that footy out there, and just had nothing on there. There's no space for his forwards up front, so he swung the footy around the arc. Found Charles Lumbus and then they got the entry here and a shot on goal. So Luke Clark, not the easiest of kicks this one. He started it uh, right and it pushed a fair in that way through for a minor score. So the Blues get their first score in the second quarter. It's taken four and a half minutes. The Blues, three goals, five. Leading row, one goal, three. As I said, played four and a half minutes in the second quarter. The ball chipped in. Ryan Mullet grabs it. Wheels around under the right foot. Kicks the ball out wide. Looking for a teammate there and Brady Egan couldn't take it. Good fist away there from the coach for the Blues and Brendan Dunn and the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Right in front of the Hastings club. Half forward line for the Demons. They're into attack for the Blues I should say. Plenty of players around the footy right here. Simon Taylor took the front position. Tried to barge his way through there. Can't pick who that away. It was Kirkwood in fact. Great tackle there by Wishart. He's just come back on the ground for the Blues. And uh, the Blues able just to edge it a, a few metres further. Simon Taylor was able to take that ball out of the ruck. Plenty of numbers around the footy again. Ends up with the blue. Stratton there is on that left foot. Chip inside towards Foster. And Foster took the mark. Wants to play on. Doesn't know what to do. Little handball off to Stratton. Another one came out there. Terrific play there by the Blues. He loved it. Straight off the boot was Matty Clifford. And Matty Clifford in his first game in New Colours kicks the Blues the first goal of the second quarter. Just the start they need, Ben. Absolutely, mate. They, um... Well, I'd be pretty disappointed with that because at that stoppage there, Hastings had Hastings had three uh, three players inside their 50, obviously with opponents and a lot of space. So probably what we had to do there was just say one or two off, get them inside 50, and then maybe give the put free up at the stoppage for them winning on the slingshot once it uh, once it entered the 50. But just so much space for the right right forwards there, and um, when the space is opportunity, Toby. Absolutely. So we've just opened it uh, opened it up nicely now. It's four goals, five, 29, right, one goal, three, nine. They needed to get the first in the second quarter, the Demons, and they haven't been able to do it. Six and a half minutes played inside 50s in the second quarter. Yeah, it's uh, Hastings leading four to two at the moment. Okay, so they've got the A of the Bs, although it is swinging across the ground now, so uh, a bit hard to judge. The umpire's going to restart play here. Up they go, big Sarah Taylor didn't even look at the footy, let, let, let no hurry just to run straight on it. Paul Rogash in the centre of the ground, off the deck he went, out there towards, uh, it was Nathan Henley, he gave a handball out to Barton, Barton wants it back, Winters Kerr kicks it to the man in the mark, and there it is again, Barton, he's uh, getting a heap of it, the umpire was pinging for holding the ball, so Benny Winters Kerr will take the free kick. So Wins Curl's got the ball now, defensive 50, goes up towards the wing position, not a bad looking kick, Taylor parked under it, got pushed off the footy, but the umpire gave him a bear for down, took the mark, comes out wide, out towards Millhouse, he's got an absolute paddock in front of him, tucks the footy under his arm, goes up there towards uh, Wilson, wasn't a great kick, Kings on his hammer, able to attack him and throw him over the line, and uh, the ball remains in play, when he push him the back there, came from uh, the big fellow in Lance Bullard, and the umpire said nothing in that. 
And you come in and bounce the ball. We're about 45 metres around from Rye's goal. So up they go. And uh, he got uh, what he wanted to do, uh, Big Josh Mahone, tap the ball over the line and out of bounds. So about 45 metres around from the Demons go. They need one. They trail by 20 points. We've played nearly eight minutes into the second quarter. Mulholland, terrific tap straight down the throat there of Hull. Kicks it up the air towards wing position. Good play there by Lloyd. He's got the job on McVeigh. He didn't like the kick. Sean Foster sees the ball over the line out of bounds. So the umpire, ready to throw the ball back into play. Does so now. Mulholland takes front position. Taylor tries to work him off it. Mulholland was strong. Good work there by Cheryl Landis. Gave it to McVeigh. McVeigh finds what he likes in the centre of the ground. Oh, that's the coaching done. No, it's not. It's Matty Clifford, I think. He kicked the ball up towards uh, inside 50. Clark just uh, stopped. Didn't like the entry. Uh, didn't like the ball coming in and uh, just went off the footy and then drove the knee into his opponent there in Ryan Taylor. Probably out of position there. It was, it was good play by the Hastings fellow just to stop the footy. So the ball comes out now. It's Foster. Foster grabs the footy, tried to work uh, his uh, opponent out of that contest. That was Danaher, and the ball goes over the line out of bounds. So some key stats in this quarter, Jordy. Yeah, it's just inside 50 is pretty even across the board for uh, possession getters across the plays, but uh, Hastings leading 6-2. to two. The inside 50s as the ball comes out, Sabiris went for a little kick, couldn't get a clear foot on it, and the umpire's going to come in and bounce the ball again. About 60 metres out, the ball's on the outer side of the ground. Up they go. Taylor gave it down to Kirkwood. Kirkwood little handball out. Wasn't the greatest kick though. Came down there towards Dickinson. Clark couldn't get it. His butter's up now there. He gets pushed off at winners. Kerr caught one high. The umpire saw that one. Stephen Rob not happy. Was there every day of the week. As winners Kerr plays on. Goes out towards the win position. Great play there by Clark to get back and support. Eventually taps the ball over the line out of bounds. That's what you like to see if you're the coach. He's your full forward working back. And helping out. Just going back from that, Stephen Rob just making a the mark there. Had a lot of pressure about him, Tully. And he just pressurised that kick enough to give the Hastings team a, just a bit more of a chance with the ball popping slightly. So the Rye Hotel scoreboard sees Hastings four goals, five, 29, leading Rye, one goal, three, nine. We're brought to you today by Pete and the team, Telstra Stores, Boards and Rose. But there he is again, Clark. He should have been paid that one he has. One on one, he's a hard man to stop. He's proven that on a number of occasions already in the opening half. He's looked impressive. He certainly has. I mean, Rye's got a, a star-studded line-up with their new fellas, but this break could clearly been the, uh, the best recruit on the ground so far. So Luke Clark from the Franks and Dolphins has an opportunity to kick his second goal for the afternoon. Coming in now, deliberate, as a shot. He's not going to get the junior, is it? It's going to fall short. Mulholland tried to keep it in. Well, pretty happy to uh, rush it through for a minor score. So they move on to a five goals, a 6.30. Four goals, six, a 30, I should say. Leading right, one goal, three. As the ball comes out, towards defensive 50. Colin McVeigh, good play there by Mullet. Charged through. Delivery was an outstanding. No, he went towards Sutton. It fell short. Great work there by Brewer. He was able to hold Sutton up. Comes out towards King. King gave it off. A nice one there towards Dickinson. Dickinson to Noble in the centre of the ground. Goes up towards full forward. Couldn't take the mark there. Charlie Landis dangerous. Gave it to Lawson. Should have went backwards again there towards Batten, but he didn't. Could have got a foot free kick for uh, a little one high there. Lawson, the umpire said no. Go right us up again. Gives it out there towards Dickinson again. Clever kick. Really clever kick, lowered the eyes and was able to find Stephen Rob who takes the mark about 35 metres out directly in front. Good play, that's where you want your forwards mark on the foot isn't it? It's an easy shot on goal and uh, Stevie Rob certainly looks busy. I love his pressure when he hasn't got the footy and hopefully he kicks his. He's pushed it. He has across the face, right across the face. In fact, it hasn't led you to the score, and Henley's got the ball now, last line of defence. So Henley goes in short, finds Barden. So Barden for the Dens. He, he has, absolutely. As he gives a little sh chip kick out, it's a shocking kick. He coughed it up. He's trying to blame his right teammates, but it was just a very, very ordinary kick, and he's jammed it down the throat of Luke Clark. We'll have another opportunity up against the boundary line. They need to hit the scoreboard a little bit better, Hastings. They've got 
you know, for probably 80% of this game so far, it's been total dominance. So to have a return of 4 or 5 at the moment, it's probably not ideal. So coming in once again, Luke Clark is out. A couple of things that the know. players loved it behind the goals. He kicks in second goal for the afternoon. Hastings, they move on to 5 goals, 6.36. Leading row, 1.39. We've played 12 and a half minutes. That is on the low hotel scoreboard. And you're listening to Adam P, the voice of Peninsula Football. Hi, I'm Jake, the mother of Pete from the Mornington and Rose from Tesla Stores. This year's winners of the Tesla Licensee of the Year Award. My dad has been really busy lately, but he would tell me they're recognised for their customer service excellence. And you really need to get in the store and experience it for yourself. So drop in and see the Toast Free Licensee of the Year team at the Toast Free Store in Mornington or Rosewood. Of course, a lot of things I need more Toast Free. And in the meantime, I'm off to go and kick the floor with Dad. Well done, Dad. Thanks, Sam. Her station's been for so a little chip kick there, came towards Danaher, Danaher around the left foot, good work there by Dan King, his coach is there, Dan is there to support, goes over the top, there's a good kick, comes down towards Winners Curl, he's under pressure, little handball out, went towards Danaher, great snow there by Hull, and David Hull uh, always does the team things, and uh, sees the ball over the line out of bounds, just to the left of the main scoreboard here, at Hastings, the ball comes back into play, Taylor's able to tap the ball down, good play there by Ryan Mullet, gave a kick up towards inside, 50 going hard at there was, uh, was uh, both Brady Egan and uh, Harrison Wilson, and Harrison Wilson uh, might have been alright last week, he's just finding it a little more difficult to find his way this week, and uh, he's coming off for a spell, Ben King also coming off, so uh, clearly it's swapping the small for the small there. Ryan Mullet goes off the ground. Pete Mawson, I think, has got the tagging job on him. He's doing a terrific job on him as well. As the ball comes out towards Mawson again, he's able to keep his feet. Hands were terrific. Charo Landis wants it. He just ran into him. He was completely ran into Danaher. Tried to take him on. Little left foot kick. Came out there towards from Mullet again. Went up towards Sutton. It fell forward. And the ball went over the line and out of bounds. So we played 14 and a half minutes in this second quarter. It's Hastings, five goals, 6.36 leading, wide, one three nine. It's all Hastings in this second quarter. So the ball comes back into play once again. Ryan Mullet, he's going to see the ball over the line. Got one in the back, Paul Morrison wearing him like an absolute glove. And the ball goes over the line, out of bounds once again. Pro Vendor, keeping the agents honest. Uh, Supplies for a magnificent trophy to give to the best player on the ground this afternoon. There's a few in line for it already. It's, it's, it's uh, Sabiris kicks the ball up, almost took his own, uh, took the mark off his own kick. The ball went straight in the air, comes out there towards Cheryl Landis again. Little handball give going out there towards Stratton. Stratton goes up the line, Foster was the only one who wanted. Stephen Rudd got pushed off at this time, comes out there towards uh, Dean Millhouse. And Foster, that's what you get from him every second time. Jeez, he gives you everything he's got. He's a workhorse, no doubt about it. Simon Taylor, good work there by the big fellow in Mel Holland. A big tackle there by, by Rob. And uh, the umpire's plucked out a free kick. I think it's going against Rob. And it's going there towards uh, Dunn. He gave it off towards Mullet. Mullet goes to the centre of the ground. Off he goes. There's L Lloyd. Kicks the ball inside. 50 now. Went wide. Timed his uh, loop nicely. There's the Demons. It goes down towards Andrew Dean. Can he turn something into, or nothing into something? He almost did. Little handball out there towards Henley. Henley got tackled. Brought to the ground. The umpire said he caught one high. And Nathan Henley will get the free kick. I'd like to see the right defenders probably roll up a fraction here. There's no point being right next to the opponent right now when the footy's more than a kick and a half away. Get up towards the middle of the ground, cause a turnover, and just keep trying to pepper that forward entry and, um, and get that score on the board. Special comments brought to you by Brent Clinic, the former Devin Morales coach. Be interesting to see how his uh, former club's going today against Pearsdale at Pearsdale. We'll try and bring you some scores at halftime. There's Nathan Henley, who was excellent last week in their win against Rose, but sets off a goal. That is a terrific kick. He put it from long range on the number side of the ground. Badly needed one for the Demons. They move on to two goals, three, 15, trailing Hastings, five goals, 636. It's 21 points the difference on the Royal Hotel scoreboard. You're listening to RWP, the voice of Peninsula Football. The sponsor, the Rye Hotel, and the Best Western Waterfall Wilson are proud to be servicing the Rye community. 
The Wye Hotel has been around for 80 years and is renowned for their good old-fashioned service and hospitality. This Western Winfield Nelson luxury accommodation and conferencing offers 30 stylish streets with modern lounges and living style bathrooms with contemporary furnishings and fabrics. Come and try our new menu. Function facilities available. Phone 5985 or visit the Wye Hotel at 2415 Road, Wye. So we're back in the center of the ground. It's Ray have booted uh, the last goal. It came from the foot of Henley, of course. The seventh of the game. Hastings 5 6 36 leading Ray. Two goals, three 15. We've played 18 minutes in the second quarter. We've got the ball in the center of the ground. It's Jansen goes inside 50 looking for Foster. Wasn't able to keep his feet, taps the ball in front of him, little handball out from Milhouse, went to Morse. Morse tried to draw a player and then ran around Colin McVeigh, that was nicely done. Kicks the ball up towards the centre of the ground, it wasn't the greatest of kicks though, and it goes down towards Hull. Hull kicks it out wide, Batten, can the ball sit for him before it runs out of bounds? It does now, he's got Brady Eden Hull on his collar, just corralled him, a lovely kick up the line, went there towards Steve Charolambus. How many for Charolambus, Jordy? Uh, he's had four this quarter. David there towards a Solanus, Solanus, he was tackled on the bench line, eventually gives it to Foster, geez that was easy, he went around him very easy, Kirkwood gave one high, the umpire said no, the umpire called play on, Barden just uh, could have gone a little harder at the free on that occasion and uh, opted for his opponent just to uh, take the ball and opted to lay the tackle. So uh, we're back. 60 metres out from Rise Goal. Geez, I'd love another one now. We've played 19 minutes and uh, we've only had the four, three goals in this quarter. Two of them to Hastings is a free kick and it's going there to Richie Vandenham. It is for the Bulls. So, uh, Mary Saburis, I'm uh, not interested in giving it back to him at all. Just throws out the elbow as well and Richie just having a little bit of a laugh at him. Not sure what that one achieved, but uh, Vandenham's got the ball, too far out to score, he'll be looking for Clark, Clark wants it high, he goes to him now, he's every chance from this position, Clark couldn't take the mark, for the ball of Linus, he couldn't take it, right defence working over time, Newhouse in a word of bother down there, Alanis butters up on the ground, they dive on top of it now, Gunnerhill's in there, Andrew Dean, a long way from the forward lines down there as well, and the umpire will come in and bounce. About five metres out from Hastings' goal. Good play there by Clark to keep the ball in. Foster keeps his feet. Rob, right foot around the corner. No one home for the Blues. And taking the mark down there was Henley. For Rye. Gave it off towards Barden. Barden gives another one out. Good play by Mullet. Mullet kicks the ball up towards the centre of the ground. But chipping in and taking a mark there was Richie Birmingham again. Gave it out there towards Lawson. Lawson's got some work to do. Can he keep the ball in? He does. Good tackle there. That was terrific play there by the Demons. And uh, the tackle was laid there by Dan there. So Stephen Dan as we said. Son of Terry. Playing at Rye this year. Kicks the ball up the line, it's a nice kick, he needs a fly, couldn't get it, they spoiled each other the right players, Brady Egan kept the ball in and Paul said no. And uh, Jordan King, the uh, Bradley umpire extraordinaire here, I'm not sure who would have uh, let them get away with the umpire's found a free kick off the ball, no. Blood wall, someone's going to uh, go off the ground. Uh, not sure as Hastings continue to swing the changes, Pete Morrison comes off, which he ran in home, also had an outstanding second quarter. The umpire's bleeding from the neck. The umpire's bleeding from the neck. So how does that happen? Oh, he's got one in the back of the head, Clark. There's a lot of cloud uh, happening in the back of the head. How does that happen for an umpire? Uh, I've seen that before. It's all over for just before in the forward pocket. Right. As, uh, there you go. So we're down to two umpires now. Stephen Rob once again able to work the ball forward. Still goes. Oh! There's a 50-50 run from Stephen Rob. He went for it. And it's gone over the line and out of bounds. Oh, he's been talked into that one uh, by the players, I reckon. I reckon. Are you getting that one, uh, I'm not too sure about that. It's a bit close to call. <laughs> oh, you can tell he's a man in yellow. You should have said it was a bad call. You might be up against this bloke in the grand final. Just tell him it was a bad call, Jordy. As the ball gets thumped forward, comes out towards that. Uh, oh, Betty with his girl. He caught one late. Didn't, didn't like uh, that from uh, Wishart at all. He threw the arm up as soon as he kicked it. But uh, the ball's still in the right. Boys' hands. The ball goes up towards uh, full forward. Coming out. Going there, Brady Egan attacks the footy hard. Good smother there. Came from Paul Rogash. 
on the skipper for the blue, sees the ball over the nine out of bounds. Left forward pocket for the Demons, out of side of the ground. We've played 22 and a half minutes. Only three goals kick, so we wouldn't expect a lot of time on in this quarter. So the big names getting around the footy for right. Simon Taylor won the tap out. Good play there by uh, Orge. Seriously, he caught one high. I'm not sure who that was. A right foot snap around the corner came from Taylor. But uh, that was uh, the young fella, was it, in uh, Brady Egan? No, it was Wilson, Harrison Wilson. He copped a beautiful hip and shoulder. But it got him in the face as the ball was brought back in by the Blues. Goes down there towards Hull and gave another one out towards McVeigh. Always wears the long sleeve, so easy to pick up. And Brian called player. I'm not sure he went off his mark. He kicks the ball across the face. Batten's got some work to do. Went back with the face. Uh, flight of it. Good play there by Danaher to get in there. They dive on top of him though. The Blues and hold the footy up. Risky kick. Wasn't a dumb They Switched the ball. Put a bit of height on it. So it was always going to be an interesting contest. Oh, this is magnificent. I hope we're getting photos of this. Yes, we are. We're getting photos of the mummy on the boundary line. Also known as an umpire. As the ball goes over the line and out of bounds. David Harris sees it over. Just keep strapping, boys. I'm not sure there's enough strapping on there. Just keep, keep going. What about Jordan? Just across, just Jordan. Across, across the eyes and just cut out a couple of eyes for a while, I reckon. Jordan's dropped the pen and he's actually limbering up. Well, yeah, there he goes. As the ball comes down towards Hull again. Oh, he caught one high. It was a bit overzealous there from the Demons. Not sure what was going on there. It wasn't clever. That was against Matty Sabiris. So he's got a little bit angry. Sabiris frustrated. No doubt about that. As David Hull's got uh, the free kick. Goes in short, finds Taylor Stratton. So Stratton plays on the middle, he goes to the outer side again, Rogash. He's giving his opponent the run around, that's Matthew Goodman. He's got the ball now, he wants to go inside short, he does to Luke Clark. Terrific play, Paul Rogash, Luke Clark. They were playing some footy again with the Dolphins. And they, uh, Clark will line up for goal number three. Just seems to be a little bit throughout the game, so right, giving up a lot of... A lot of spots sort on of guard space too much right now and it's not a, not a time to do that with Hastings having all the momentum. They've got to be a bit tighter and they're just allowing the, the Hastings guys too much room, especially in the corridor for that punch kick inside and that's when that transition happened. So Luke Clark having a pin for goal and the um, Stevie Rob likes it behind the goals. I think he might have dubbed that he has. That's goal number three to Luke Clark and that's number six for Hastings. They move on to six or seven forty-three. Leading wide, two goals, three fifteen. The Demons in a world of trouble. Absolutely. They uh, look it's it's all Hastings at the moment, obviously with the score line, but even in general play. When Roy go forward, there's not a lot of system to their game at the moment, and that's just a, a full credit to the, the pressure that Hastings are putting on the footy club and the right ball handlers. So we've played 25 minutes in this second quarter. It's all Hastings, 6 7 43, wide, 2 3 15. We don't believe there's a great wind advantage to either end. Dan Noble just coming up on the ground, and uh, there's plenty of changes being swung. Inside 50s, uh, Hastings leading 12 to 5 in this quarter. So Brent, you got a score, you got an update there? Yes mate, my old club Devon Meadows playing Pearsdale. We've got Devon Meadows 6-4 leading Pearsdale 2-3. So a good start there to the Panthers. Go Panthers. Well they're both Panthers aren't they? <laughs> so so we're both going to be happy. As the ball goes down, once again, great play there by Knight. He swooped on the loose ball, kicks the ball inside. 50 can do big Harrison, take the mark. Wilson, no he can't. Ball comes down, plenty of pressure there from the Demons. You've got to work hard in there, Daniel Dickinson, he is. He was happy just to bring the ball to the ground. And we see what's going on with the money. The money's still walking around the ground. I think he's going to the room. Behind the goals now, it's a little bit of a slope, a little bit of a lie down. He might be right coming into the last call as the ball gets swung out there by Taylor Stratton. Kicks the ball out wide, looking for a teammate, Rogash, left hand handball, inside defensive 50, got a work there, Mullet got one high, eventually gave it out to Barton. Barton has a shot for goal for the Demons, and I think he might have kicked it, he has. A well needed goal at the 26 and a half minute mark, they move on to a 3 3 21. Trailing Hastings, a six goals, 7.43. What's on the Royal Hotel scoreboard? You're listening to that on the voice of Peninsula Football. Did you know that the Bendigo Community Bank breeds to support our local sporting clubs? The company they support, Wilmington Peninsula Independent Football League, Wilmington Peninsula Junior Football League, Wilmington Peninsula Cricket Association, MPCA Underwriters Association, Wilmington Netball Association, McLean Netball Association, as well as OWPFM. With all the usual banking facilities and financial advice, our sponsor, the Bendigo Community Bank Branches in Rye, Dramona and Mary Rosemary, are supporting the local 
Center again, it was Mullet who got the ball out there towards Tyre. Uh, Lloyd and Lloyd kicked the ball across the face. She said it was a nice build up for the Dons. Probably the best they've looked all match. Absolutely. Last year clearances to Ryan. It was a good clearance that last one which created that goal goal scoring opportunity. They got it deep into their forward line, isolated the defenders and uh, and that's when you, you're likely to kick a goal there, Toe. Little left foot chip went there towards Stratton. Jizzy's has been good Taylor Stratton. He kicks the ball up towards the wing position. Batten's just come on the ground, takes an uncontested mark. He wanted to give the ball off to Cheryl Lambert who's still calling for it, Chara goes a little bit further towards Clark, it's not a bad option, he's got some players inside, just couldn't get hold of it, and the ball goes over the line out of bounds, so Batten, Chara Landis not all that happy with Batten, uh, not giving it off, probably needed to move a bit quicker there, Tully, absolutely, Chara Landis was really on on the half wall flank there with a lot of space, he was, as the ball going to be thrown back in again, we've played 28 minutes into this second quarter, it couldn't be a long quarter, I wouldn't have thought, 20 plus time on already, up to 8 minutes, the umpire going off I guess with a uh, cracked head, probably has something to do with it Brent. Yeah we, you know, we never, uh, never like blood rolls Tully, but it, it's got a little bit of humour that one. <laughs> it's got plenty of humour, I would have thought, as the ball comes down there towards Mal Island, he couldn't get it, oh good work there by Jansen, good work there by Cam, uh, by Cam Brown, not Cam, it's Matt, Matt done as well to lay the tackle. What's your thoughts on Scotty Jansen so far Tully? I think he's been very busy, he's been very busy. He's had plenty of it as the ball up in the centre again, third man up, was good work. That came there from uh, Simon Taylor, I think it was, or it might have been, uh, it might have been Nathan Henley. But the umpire's found a free kick, it's going uh, Ryan's way, Ryan Mullet, who's starting to find his way, Mullet, gives it out there towards Henley. Henley, a little chip inside was good. Give the give the free. Actually, it's Henley who's got it now. So uh, the ball goes in towards the centre ground. Good work there by Goodman, able to get the ball over towards Barden. Now Barden goes inside 50, needs to be a good kick it was. It was a whip and Gelino takes the mark. So Gelino has already kicked one goal this afternoon. There's a free kick, what is it, a 50 metre penalty? 50 metre penalty, and it was uh, Dean Milhouse who got the ball uh, in the... Uh, Key offensive post, the start of that chain reaction there for the team is going to result in a goal to Gelino. So, uh, we've been able to kick the last two, if he can kick this one, might give him a bit of spirit going in two half time, so Gelino kicks the goal, he kicked four last week, as we said, he's kicked two, this week he kicks goal number nine and goal number ten, and he kicks the fourth for the Demons, and they get back into the contest, all of a sudden, two late goals, they move to 4-3-27, Hastings, 6-7-43, it's a 16 point ball game on the Royal Hotel scoreboard. That's what happens, Tully, when you uh, when you don't put a side away when you have a real dominant patch like Hastings has had. But uh, Rose has come back, kicked too late, and have gone into half time with a spring in their step. So uh, up to 30 minutes now in this second quarter. Let's see, uh, Simon Taylor, Rhett Sutton's been in the rack the last couple of contests and been able to tap it straight down the throat of Mart. Some but really good clearances the last couple of them, though. Let's see if Taylor can uh, do the same thing. Dunny, the coach, has gone on to Mullet there in that centre clearance. He would have seen him get the last two and won't let him doing the same thing again. He's, he's holding him on in there, so uh, Lampard wouldn't be picking that up, but uh, he didn't have a clear run at the footy Mullet. Good play there by Brendan Dunn. So the umpire will start play again, true centre position. 27 plays 43, it's a 16 point lead to the Blues. We've played 31 minutes into the second quarter. Wishart come crashing through. Can they score a little cheeky one before half time? Well, right. the ball's still in the middle of the ground. The umpire will come in and bounce the ball for the third time. Just as this quarter's gone on, Tully, just improved their work rate, Ryan, and it's uh, no surprise they've got a couple of late goals and probably got themselves back into the game a little bit. So their tackling's uh, working a little bit better too, Ryan, so Hastings not getting the free ball as they were from a half-back line perspective uh, early in the contest. The ball gets thrown up, good play there by Taylor, showing a little bit more body strength on that occasion over Mohan. Andrew Dean was pulled off a great tackle then, again there by Chara Lambus. Jeez, he's worked hard to lay Chara. Good to see him back to some of his best. Didn't have a great year last year with injury. Darrell Aris was probably another one, but they both had their hands on the footy this afternoon. So up they go. Good work there by Taylor to get the uh, tap again. Done. Well, race gives you 120, and he was the first man underneath that one and trapped it. So really like that from Dunn being the coach. Obviously sense that Mullet was getting a lot of the footy around those last two clearances and went straight to him, so good to see. So we're trying to work each other off the footy. He goes Charlie Landis, gave it off to Stephen Robb. 
It could have been Ping for holding the ball. I think he just got his toe on as Daniel Wishart kicks the ball around the corner, looking towards Batten. Batten got a little bit of treatment off the ball there from Milhouse. But uh, the ball went over the line and out of bounds. So uh, just keep playing footy balls was the call from the hosting spectator. So I uh, might have thought that we're getting involved in some things that probably they shouldn't be. Good play there. Left foot around the corner, Barton. Happy to see the ball over the line out of bounds. I think we're going to get possession here, no, almost. So the ball goes over the line out of bounds. We're playing 33 minutes, guys, in the second quarter. He's hosting six goals, a 7.43 leading way, four goals, a 3.27. That's on the Royal Hotel scoreboard. Brought to you today by Pete and the team, Telstra Stores, Mornington and Rosebud. We're going to think about uh, the best player on the green in the first half, the pro vendor, keeping the agents on us, best player on the green. The ball goes up towards uh, the full forward line for the Blues, but great mark under pressure from Adam Kirkwood. They need to move the ball quickly. Lee Morse kicks it towards Egan. As the ball sit, it does. He lets a couple go past him. Paul Rogash, terrific tackle. He's in trouble there. He's Lloyd. Lloyd around onto the right foot. Goes up towards Sutton. It's an up and under. Great work there by Lance Paul. He's able to crack the, smash the ball away from him and the ball goes over the line out of bounds. Certainly heating up isn't it Tully? Now the pressure is uh, mounting, no doubt about it. 33 and three quarter minutes gone in the second quarter. It's the Blues by 16 points. Rich Sutton tapped the ball down, was able to rove his own. Should have gave the handball off, he does now. Goes back to Sutton, needs to get it on the boot now. He does, kicks it up towards full forward. Jorinos, that is terrific hands, takes the mark. He's going to be kicking into the face of the Blues. Wants to play on, does so. Wheels around under the left. And I think he might have pushed it across the face. He has through for a minus. Scorer. So 4-4-28. The Demons trailing Hastings at six goals at 7.43. And uh, inside 50s in this quarter, Jordy. In this quarter, Hastings with 14 to right 10. So well, I'm just starting to get their hands on a little bit now as Wishart attacks the footy. Does so. Gets pulled down without it. Gets it now. Gives a little handball off to Rob. Rob trying to use his pace. Kick the ball off the ground and the boundary line is going to beat him. And it does eventually. Just got a score, Tully from uh, Tractor Park. Devin Meadows up by five goals against Pierce Dole at half time. Well, wow, that's a brilliant start there to Devin Meadows. Now, with the unknown qual quantity, as I said this morning, Pierce Dale's pre season form was less than ordinary, so not a great surprise. So, uh, I think he might have been the only one that tipped Devin Meadows this morning. Nah, it's a good, uh, good start for him, so if they can continue in the second half. So we'll get some more scores around the ground. We'll go back to the boys in the studio at halftime. They'll give us some around the ground scores. Believe it or not, gentlemen, it's, uh, it's getting dark here. The second quarter's gone that long. It's 35 and a half minutes. And uh, could do with a food and a drink, to be honest, as the ball comes down towards Dan and Hurt. Mel Hines in there. We're inside 50 here for the boys. Alanis, he tried to dodge and leave, comes out towards Barton, Barton to Benny with his curve, little chip kick, Rob's just smashed him over the boundary line, went out back and helped him get up off the ground, the ball goes up towards full forward for the Blues, for the ball, and Cheryl Landis, right foot snap, just couldn't bring it back, throw for a minor score. So they move on to six goals, 8-44 to right. Oh, I just come to the bench here, Tully. So uh, he's limping too, so uh, let's hope that it's just a uh, little knock. He's doing the bulk of the work today. Big Mully, the big sauce, 4 4 28, so important for Hastings, the big Rackman. Let's hope that it's just a little knock and he comes back onto the ground as Andrew Dean takes the ball through the centre of the ground, has a bounce, kicks the ball inside 50. Playing from behind there's Gelino. He uh, needs to lay some tackles, add some pressure on, he does so now, gets involved. He was a long way behind his opponent, but it wasn't the greatest of kicks from Andrew Dean. He ran the ball over the back, Dean went spearing in. And the ball's inside, rise 50. Without 45 metres. And here we go, the 36.32 minute mark of the second quarter. Siren has finally gone. And it's Hastings at half time, 6 goals, 8, 44. Leading row, 4 goals, 4, 28. It's a 16-point ball game. Goal kickers in the first half to this point. Luke Clark, the recruit for Hastings, has three. One each to Matty Clifford, also from the Bomb Beach Free Club. Taylor Stratton, a beautiful left footer. And Steve Chalalambas kicked the first goal of the game for us. And 